This is just an 18 inch long stick. It's an inch and a quarter in diameter. There's a link below. If you need one of these, you can make these yourself. It's super simple. You get a 36 inch dowel rod and cut it in half, sand it down and put oil on it. I want you to do a simple warm up with a twisting motion here. A lot of the techniques are gonna be focused on your uh, wrist and striking with a twisting motion. So I want you to get this warm up here on each hand, starting with the just simple turn and the weight of the stick is gonna warm up your wrist and build some power in your forearm. After you warm up with that one, I want you to do this turning motion, rolling in one side and then rolling in the other side. One of the harder techniques that I find to teach people with the short stick for self-defense is this snapping motion, coming in one side or coming in the other side. Hello, Awkward the Cat. You're gonna come in one side and the other side, and when you do that, your hand stays mostly closed. Hello, Andrew, or Matthew. Matthew's here, Dee's here. But it's just turning, and you see my hand's not open yet. As you start to warm up here, I want you to start to open your fingers, not off of the stick, but open it so that the bottom of the stick can move out and then come back in, kind of a snapping motion. When you strike, that extra snap is gonna increase the speed of the strike. Hello, Red Dog, it's good to see you. So you're coming around from side to side, first with your wrist closed, then starting to open and close, and then you can start to increase the speed. Hello, Garen, as you come through, you're gonna do that for about 30 seconds with one hand, and then the other hand is turning first, Again, I want you to see that your hand is closed. And you want to go also for a full range of motion. Once you start to get the motion, open the fingers and close the fingers. That opening and closing is going to start to build power in your grip so that when you use a short stick for self-defense, they're not going to be able to take it out of your hand so easily. You want it really strong. Hello, Ellen. It's good to see you. Coming around for 30 seconds from side to side. And then I want you to get right into your basic strikes. When you hold it, you're going to hold, uh, have a little bit here on the bottom. That's so that when you strike here, you can come into the top of someone's face or their head, striking here, striking behind you, swinging it into their head, their neck for self-defense, hitting it right there. Hello, Aaron, Catherine. It's nice to see you. You're bringing it around from one side to the other side. Now we did the warm up here, but now I want you to bring it from your shoulder, striking one side and then the other side coming through, thinking about striking his temple or his jaw or his neck for self-defense. You're gonna move kind of quickly in these first two strikes, focusing on bringing it back and feeling it touch your shoulder every time. If you don't feel it touch your shoulder, you're not going back far enough. And I want it to always come off your shoulder on these first two strikes. The next strike after this, you're gonna bring it up at an angle from one side and up at an angle from the other side. Imagine he's reaching out, trying to grab you or stab you or punch you and you're gonna smash his wrist or smash that arm, smash the hand. So you're bringing it up here and up here from one side to the other side coming through. Hi, Doug, it's good to see you. Good. Doug said he has a short stick in his truck. Bringing it up from one side to the other side, from side to side and then straight over and back in these horizontal strikes. So just think about hitting his jaw, his ear, his uh, temple, his neck for self-defense. Bringing it from one side to the other and not a big winding up and twisting strike, but a real tight twisting strike, right? Turning in and turning back. Notice that when you come over, your palm is facing the sky. That's so if you run into something that hurt, <laughs> run into something that's not coming out of your hand, coming through here and coming back this way. One of the keys to the effectiveness of this particular stick is that it's oak, so it's already a hard wood. And then I soak this one two days in butcher block oil. I just took a couple out of the oil this morning, getting ready to send to somebody, and they are really heavy. And that's the key, that, that's that heavy, the heaviness of the oil allows them to strike a lot harder than a dry piece of wood. After this one, you're gonna go down and then turn your palm and come up. Down, think about striking on the top of his head for self-defense. You could easily uh, crack somebody's skull with this for self-defense. Coming down, you could knock him out, hit him in the operating system. And again, maybe they're reaching, grabbing, maybe they're trying to hurt you, and you can smash it. Yeah, Garen says, hold between the end and the middle 
for better balance. Yes, right about here. Also, so that from here, you'll see this in, in uh, Filipino martial arts, is this is a trapping or a stripping motion. Or the purpose of this is to be able to trap their hand or trap a weapon and actually strip it out of their hand. Also, you use that to strike with coming in here, coming back here. I want you to strike down with this turning your wrist down to add power to the strike. So this is the in the warm up. We did this. Hello, Steven. We did this motion in the warm up. And if you keep joined us late and you didn't catch the warm up, go back when we're done. But it's just this open and close, open and close. Now you're bringing it down a little, Michael, and you're smashing it on top of his head. And then your palm is coming up. And as you come up, you're also turning the wrist and striking up this way. Notice that your other hand is always up. That's to protect you from him hitting you. That's also to protect you from yourself <laughs> hitting yourself, especially in practice. But you're bringing it up, down and up, down, turn the wrist, bring it up, down and up. This also could come right up under the, the middle of his legs, right into his groin for self-defense or up under his chin. You can strike very effectively with this quick, fast, explosive strike. So the, this first two strikes off the shoulders, second two coming off the hips, next two coming from side to side, maybe mid bicep. You can do that high, you can do that low, you can hit the knees that way, strike his legs, strike the body, strike the hands, and then down on top and then up. Um, Butcher block oil is not like linseed oil. The question is, what is butcher block oil? Is it like linseed oil? It's not. It's, it's a much lighter, uh, biodegradable, uh, edible. It's an edible oil, which is why you would put it on your butcher block. That's where you cut all your vegetables and your meats. And so you use that to condition the wood if you have a wooden butcher block, and that keeps it nice and young because it has oil in it. And so it keeps it from drying out and getting used up faster. But the butcher block oil is easier on your skin. I found um, a lot of the boiled linseed oils, a lot of the oils that are commercially available at your hardware store have heavy metals in them. And if you put that on your stick, those heavy metals start to get in your hand and through your skin, get in your blood. They can have adverse effects on your health over time. I do so much with wooden weapons. I've switched exclusively to butcher block oil because there's nothing in it that can hurt you. It's just a healthier alternative to mineral oil. Well, mineral oil is a little bit better, but you have to, you have to really look at the mineral oil because a lot of the oils, they're allowed to call them mineral oil, but it might not be traditional mineral oil. It might be a process, it might be actually a derivative of a petroleum product. It might come from the oil that they pull out of the ground and then they treat it in a way and then they allow them to you know, call it whatever they want. And then all of a sudden you're getting the wrong oil. So that's why I use the butcher block oil. All right, those are the basic slashing strikes. Now I want you to practice a thrusting strike. And everything that you do with the right hand, I also want you to practice with your left hand. And again, touching that shoulder, coming down. But you can do that on your own. The strike, the thrusting motion, the first th uh, thrust is just into the center line of his body. Just coming in, trying to stop his forward advance, smash that nose, smash the teeth down his throat, into his neck, into the solar plexus, down into between the belly button and the privates, smashing anywhere you can stop him. That could be your opening move. You stop, and then you strike. Stop, strike, strike, and then strike. And, but you're just starting with this basic thrusting motion. The next thrust is gonna be the swinging thrusting motion where you're bringing it around this way, right? So you have an underhand thrust where your palm is facing up and you go super for, or straight forward. Hello, Brandon. And then the second one where you're swinging, coming here, from here, the next thrusting motion is gonna come off that shoulder. And this comes from Filipino martial arts, coming from here and down. That's a little bit more advanced, but you've been practicing this with me for a while and I want you to have some new techniques to practice. So think about starting, el point the elbow at him, bend the elbow, and see what that does to your stick. It points it right in his throat. You know, stick it into his throat or maybe his eyeball, into his teeth. So you have forward palm up thrusting, coming through here, coming around here, and then up and down over the top. 
That's his throat right there, striking, coming down this way. And this motion paired with this motion, with your hand in the middle on his chest to keep him back, this becomes something called the sewing machine where you're coming over and under, over and under, and then up, swinging to the side. So you can swing it into his ear, you can hit him up under the throat, come down on top this way. But I want you to practice these, this motion, this motion, this motion, and this motion when you do your, thr your thrust. So you have a simple thrust forward, one, a swinging thrust, two, coming off the opposite shoulder and down. See this angle where it comes up and then it goes down. This angle where it comes up and goes down, reaching in. One, two, three, four. Now the next strikes, series of strikes, which you to use two hands like you're doing a push-up. And the first motion is just gonna take this hard piece of oak and smash the teeth straight down his throat for self-defense. Just stepping in and smashing that over and over and over again until the fight's over and you win. Self-defense principle. This is not a street fight. This is not a schoolyard beef. This is somebody who's trying to take your life or take your dignity, take your freedom. Just take that and smash it through his face. From here, you're gonna swing away and come in. Full force of your body. This is just a speed accelerator coming through here and coming through here. Yeah, Garen says, fishermen down here in Florida use the fish billy stick the same way. Absolutely. If you know what a fish billy is, that's when the fish is still alive and you whack him in the head and all those colors run out in the bottom of your boat. One, two, three, thrust. So coming up, bend your knees, get lower than he is, especially if he's got a weapon or he's a bigger dude or if there are multiple attackers or he might even be a little bit faster. I'm gonna lower your body and then explode using the power of your legs to push you up and in to that first strike, punch him through his teeth for self-defense, swing and bring it to his ear, and then from the other side, this twisting motion coming from side to side will generate massive amounts of power for you to be able to stop somebody who's a much bigger opponent. Bend the knees, push with the thrust, straight into the face, swing in one ear, stick it in his other ear. If you want to, you can finish him off with that strike down on the top of his head. Those are the basic pushing two hand strikes. There's one more here, which is just boxing his ears, pushing from side to side. And you can hit him in the face, you can hit him in his jaw, you can hit him in the body, that all works. You can be sitting in a chair and he's trying to hit you. As long as you keep your two hands on it, you're gonna have a powerful strike that way. Now from here, from this position, we're gonna turn the wrist out for a flicking strike. This comes from the Irish stick fighting. And then the other side, one, two. Smacking here, smacking here, right? Coming over the top. These are very explosive, very fast, disruptive strikes. They're very effective because they're hard to stop. They're hard to see. You just look later and say, how did I get hit? And it's that twisting strike coming over the top. And then when you put the other hand there, you have a backstop or a rebounding board so that you can actually hit it faster. Notice that you're turning your shoulders. If you step in at the same time, you're gonna hit them even more powerfully, even more um, with a lot of stronger. Yeah, Garen says, uh, baseball bats. The only reason I stay away from things like baseball bats, golf clubs, is because uh, they're obviously super effective self-defense tools, but they're also, I think, more likely to be used or viewed as um, an offensive weapon where I want you to think about using this as a defensive weapon. And the key is, you might not necessarily carry this with you, but as you said earlier, Garen, maybe you've got the billy club, uh, for the, the fish billy club, maybe you've got a tire thumper, maybe there's it's just a rolled up magazine. There are a lot of sticks everywhere. And so I advocate for you to learn the skill of stick fighting, the techniques of stick fighting, the theory or the principles of stick fighting, and then bring those with you. Take the skill, take the theory, take the principles of stick fighting, and then you have sticks everywhere. And whether it's this size, longer, shorter, if it's a baseball bat, if it's a golf club, if it's a tire iron, if it's the, the squeegee at the gas station that no one uses, 
because it's that water is nasty, right? I've never seen one that's got clean water. But if you use one of those squeegees, you see them in there. That's a stick. It's about the same length as this. It just has the squeegee on the end. But they're usually made out of a really strong plastic material that would be very effective for self-defense. It could be you're working in a restaurant. It could be a, 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 an umbrella, right? It could be a collapsed umbrella that you then use for self-defense because you know how to fight for self-defense with sticks. Learn how to fight with sticks and then bring the stick skills with you and then you'll be able to use whatever is at hand, literally, to defend yourself. That's the whole, the whole purpose. Um, yeah, Brandon says you saw a stabbing video with a technique that seemed very hard to defend against. I think you're probably coming back to the sewing machine, which is an extremely hard one to defend against. We do the sewing machine in class a lot with the, the knife trainers, and we try to defend against it. And I, I think it's if somebody knows how to do this, it's going to be very difficult and the key is this this is the key this hand here either holding on to their shirt or their skin for self-defense or just creating this distance so that you can effectively strike in the throat or the face in the body in the face in the body and that is really hard and then you can add other strikes along with that now we've been holding it this way the whole time you can also let it slide so that now the length is coming out of the bottom. And the purpose for this is to protect this arm. Hello, Naj, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, an ink pen, Garen says, an ink pen you can use for self-defense. Or one of my favorites, the dry erase marker. It's very effective. So from here, this is now protecting your arm if they have a slashing weapon, or if they have a baseball bat, or they have a tire iron, they have a weapon, you can then use that to give you a little bit better support than just your skin and flesh and bone. But you can also use that to strike with. Bringing this across and out this way is a very effective, powerful strike, especially smashing against his jaw or his temple for self-defense. Coming across this way, you can bring it back, striking over the top, striking here. Maybe he's behind you, turning. That's just a force multiplier. You have so much strength and this strike coming through this way or down into his groin, into that, that thin muscle, like we said, between the belly button and the privates or into his privates, coming here, coming around, maybe coming into the ribs. That's a very effective strike. Plus, like I said, you can use that to defend against here. If you need extra support, put the other hand behind it to block up, block down, block over to the side, turning your body and blocking to the other side that gives you a little bit extra protection. So from this position, you can practice just sliding it down, slide it up, slide down, slide up. I like to do things like this all the time, as I'm sure most of us do, right? You start to play around with it, almost like it's a nunchuck, and then you do all the twisting and stuff, and then you do all the flipping. But if you were defending yourself with it, the last thing you'd wanna do is flip it or let it come out of your hand. So you'd wanna be able to change your grip from this grip into this grip maybe putting the other hand on it and you could change it like that or you could grab it like that and change it. But as little time with your hand off of the stick as possible. So those are just some of the ways that I want you to practice with today, starting with your slashing strikes, coming down, coming up, horizontal, vertical down, vertical up. Remember, coming up or coming up under the chin, smashing that way. And then your thrusts, a simple palm up thrust or a straight thrust um, from here, coming over the side, coming over this side, swinging it in, that thrust, two hands, pushing, smashing to the sides, swing it in one side, swing it in the other side, bend the knees, thrust straight up in, almost like a rifle butt attack or bayonet. If you've ever used the pugil sticks, you know what I mean? Turning the wrist here, these twisting strikes, and the key here is allow your wrist to turn over and do that smack, not just out, that's strong, but that's a lot faster and that's a lot stronger. So bringing it over and over. Yeah, uh, Matthew said, just made a good point. A cane, a screamer, nunchucks are all sticks. Uh, nunchucks, just two sticks with a string in the middle, but they all move essentially in the same way, depending on the length. If you were using the, you see that's a little short for my long arms, but if you were using like your 36 inch Hanbo, I was doing this earlier, 
you can do a lot of these turning motions just to get familiarization with this move. If you want to learn nunchucks better, you can start with a stick and get the basic motions down. And then when you pick up the nunchucks, it's a lot, a lot faster, a lot easier. Anyway, practice with your short stick. If you have a short stick that you like to practice with, put in the comment section below, how long is it and how wide is it? I've sent a lot of these out to you. Some of you have an inch uh, in diameter. I love those because the speed, some have these thicker inch and a quarter. The ones that I, I've been uh, figuring out how to find better sources for oak. I put in a link below if you want me to send you one. I make them myself. I, may, I send out about 10 or 15 a week. I just pulled a whole bunch out of the, um, out of the oil this morning. I've been soaking for almost three days actually. And they are, they are heavy and hard. they hit hard. Anyway, you guys have been awesome. I will see you in a little bit. I've got to go back to school. I've got more classes. All I'm doing is teaching these days. So, but I love working out with you. So we'll be back.